Hey everybody, welcome back again for the final tour of my March garden. Um, today I'm gonna do my entire front yard, um, hopefully just breeze right through it. Um, it's already the middle of the month, but like I said, I wanted to stay on track and keep myself a video diary of um, every month so I can see how I'm progressing personally with my garden space and everything going on. So let me turn the camera around and show you from the front of my driveway. So I'm taking all these videos midday, so hopefully they are not too bright. Um, but right here, this little section of my garden is looking really pretty right now. Um, everything is starting to really put on some growth. There's a random salvia here. Like I said, these things reseed like crazy. So I kind of just do this and I, I toss them and that's how they spread. Um, so if you look here, there's so many goldenrod plants popping up. I will be taking some of these out. They've grown all along the edge here. Um, there's just too many. And I know from experience, they grow about eight, nine feet tall. So I'm going to make sure that I, I'm gonna come back and cut them like halfway down throughout the season, like one time maybe. Um, that way they branch out and they don't flop over. So we're gonna try that this year. I have a quirky stem passion vine starting to grow that'll make a nice ground cover probably grow up that rock up this sign uh, and whatnot um, there's some piney woods drop seed in here and you see it has gone to seed um, it looks pretty there's a small dwarf fakahatchee grass um, it stayed real small <laughs> so it was a very small clump so we're gonna see how that ends up um, I bought these yesterday at Wilcox. They are a native, um, the native blue mist flower. I had one in here a year or two ago, or the, when I first did this bed, and it never came back. So I bought a couple more because I really loved this purple color in this bed. Um, and then I have, it's really blooming now, if you come here, is the... Um, Florida green eyes and they go to seed and look like this and that's how they spread I've been taking oops they blow out of my hand I've been taking the seeds out of there and just tossing them out oh, this probably blew like way over there tossing them in this section <laughs> but um, yeah so I made another video about how these smell like chocolate and they really do that's the other name for them is the chocolate flower um, but they just are really pretty and sunny and bright right here. I try not to keep this too wild. Um, that's why the goldenrod, I was a little iffy about it because people do walk along these sidewalks a lot in our neighborhood and I don't want anything to hit them. So these plants pretty much, um, you know, obey their little part of the sidewalk bed here. Um, and that, like I said, I do have, there's a rosemary and a sage plant in there. Other than that, you see my shadow. Other than that, um, there's nothing else really to show in this bed. Um, let's see. Back here, it's so shady. I can't tell what you can see, so sorry. This is where I redid um, all the grass. I took all the grass out of here and I planted clover. And you can see the clover is nice and lush. I guess you can see it better when I get down here. And it's more lush in the back. But for some reason over the winter, this middle section here um, didn't take as well. So I'm going to reseed it with clover when it starts raining again that i think that's the big big thing is it needs to have excessive moisture and when we get so hot even if i run my sprinklers during the day if the full sun hits that area they dry out and the seeds dry out so um i 
did heavier planting of blue-eyed grass in the middle. And if you, let's see, are any open right now? I think I just saw some open. I did scatter blue-eyed grass in here when I first seeded this bed. You can see one kind of here. This is like yesterday's flower. But they get those um, blue flowers on them. And you see them all on the sides of the highway during this time of year. There'll be like a, a blanket of, like it looks like mist um, in on the sides of the road. But it's these blue, um, blue-eyed grass flowering. And so there's a mixture of blue-eyed grass, clover, which is non-native, but I think does really well here. And it does flower. It's beneficial for the pollinators. And it is a nitrogen fixer. Um, but you can see I do have rabbits. And I think that's why some of them don't have heads on them or leaves on them. But it's okay. I mean, the rabbits probably just make it bush out a little more there's enough for them to eat and still be productive so i'm looking forward to see how this all fills in i literally just put the extra blue eyed grass uh plants in yesterday um there's some i'm gonna leave these two these are blanket flowers because i don't plan on mowing this so any little wildflower that pops up would be okay um there's some like native little I think this might be toad flax or the native snapdragon. And then, oh, here's one. Here's a little blue-eyed grass. So this should be pretty. I'm gonna redo the plants around here. It's just, um, I have one beauty berry there. I might add another one. I don't know yet. Um, let's see, we still have this, um, why does the name escape me right now? I just talked all about it during the, su the winter. It's fine. I'll put the name on the screen. <laughs> um, I do have some cutbacks to do. This was a marigold that I actually found. And I just planted it here to keep it alive while I decided what to do with it. And then I forgot about it. And it... Um, it just stayed so I'm like okay well I'm gonna leave you um, I have a cone flower here and then you see these little bits of green popping up I had twin flower planted in here and so it is coming back and that will be really pretty later on in the season it'll bloom a purple flower I have my st. John's wart uh, along the edge here those are a little bigger so those will get pretty yellow flowers mixed with the purple um, this is a blue porter weed i will cut this back now that all the frost is gone just can't get to everything at once so yeah it's mainly native st john's wort native twin flower native porter weed um, there was some coreopsis in here and then i have a muley grass there and a muley grass on the other side and then I did see if you look there's lots of twin flower this twin flower has spread a lot and that's exactly what you want it looked really poor in the end of the season I cut it all the way back to the ground and it is coming back beautifully I had in here and I don't see any now um, some liatris growing I put some seeds in here and they were sprouted but I don't see them now but I have a lot of lytra seedlings that I can put in here and I walk this exact path every time I go back there and then I wanted to show you this little seedling is another quirky stem passion flower and it's just growing literally next to my garage door. There's my garage door, here's the corner. So I'm gonna leave it and it'll grow and it'll be a little ground cover here. So, that's the most extensive I've talked about this side of the garden up front. So coming up to my um, mailbox bed, 
I have the dwarf Fakahatchee grasses. They're doing really well. This Carolina Jasmine has put on a lot of growth in the last few days. New leaves coming out. Um, the wild coffee. This wild coffee plant and this wild coffee plant were bought at the same time. This one was doing, it was pretty droopy for a while, but it's doing better. Um, this one actually is flowering right now. Oh, look. What is that? I don't know if that's an ant. But it's flowering now. Starting, uh, just starting to open the flowers actually. So that'll be flowering and then we'll go to um, have berries on it after. And then I have... Um, some golden rods popping up in here. This golden rod just got done blooming. I actually have one blooming, which is really weird. This is another uh, dwarf Fakahatchee grass. That is the seed. You see how oh, the seed head's just gonna come out, but it just kind of blows in the wind. Um, another porter weed. This is the blue. Um, Liar leaf sage gone to seed. That's why it spreads so easily because all of these are seeds. My cone flower that bloomed. I staked it up, but it just keeps falling. But it's still pretty. I'm gonna leave it until it soaks up all the energy at once. And the birds can eat the seeds or I'll take the seeds. Who knows? Um, another Liar leaf sage, more cone flower, lots of things in here. I want this to be, you know, pretty green ground cover. Um, another, the, that is another quirky stem passion flower vine, more cone flower, a small beauty berry, another porter weed. So, kind of the same theme going on native low maintenance drought tolerant for the win um and here is this little bed i've recently i did take some leaves out of it if you believe it or not but it doesn't look like i did <laughs> um there's one cone flower that bloomed from this there are more cone flowers in here i cut them back um and then i put in a lot of little basil small basil plants all throughout two different types of basil I think spicy glow basil and Greek basil maybe I don't remember but there's basil all throughout here and I love basil because it what is that oh that's a new cone flower I just cut this back and it's already growing same with that one um, basil just smells good when you walk by it so kind of do that for my neighbors a little bit and then the flowers are good for the pollinators and plus this is a nice sunny moist border so basil grows really well here um, and then I can pick it whenever I want it for tea or my neighbors can pick it it worked really well last year um, so coming up here let me step over this my miracle berry still has not leafed out, and this is March 16th, but I don't think it's dead. Oh, well, that branch might be dead. I don't know. I'm still going to give it another month, because we've still gotten some cooler temperatures, and it really is a heat-loving plant, so I'd be really sad if I cooked this thing. Like I said, I, I heated it up at night when we got fro like freezing temperatures and then I left the heat lamp on and covered and I cooked it. And that does as much damage as the freeze does. So extra love didn't help this plant. <laughs> I would probably replace it because I really do like it. Um, this bed is doing really well. It's still the same. Um, I've got leeks and onions and garlic 
at this point I don't think I can tell which is which I think these are garlic this is elephant garlic um, the cabbage are doing pretty well they're getting to the point where they're almost to their lifespan completely so whatever they look like is what they're gonna look like um, and I'm just gonna harvest it I've harvested quite a bit of cabbage that didn't have a head as it was because it didn't look like it was forming a head so I just harvested it. The leaves still taste great. I put them in, I made a couple different dishes with them. Um, like that, that's gonna do nothing. <laughs> that's gonna do nothing, but it is what it is. We just got a new bunny too. So anything that's less than desirable, I'll give it to the bunny. Like these carrots, they're all, they're so close together, but it's okay. I mean, I don't care if they're small carrots. A lot of this I um, grew out here for um, it to flower because I wanted, you know, a cottagey garden feel. So I have to leave some of the carrots at all times because they're biennial. They won't flower till next year. So we'll see how that goes. I just took the sweet peas off the trellis because we ate off those and they started turning brown like their life was about over. Um, more carrots, more cabbage. There's some onion. No, this is a leek. No, this is an onion. I can't tell right now. But it's flopping over. I've harvested so much, so many onion greens, green tops. It's crazy. Um, but yeah, there are leeks along the edges. Some of them look better than others. Don't really know why. I don't know if you can get a better picture. This zinnia popped up on its own. <laughs> but like this is a leak. You can see how uniform it is starting way up here. So I love leeks. Like this is garlic. And if I'm ever unsure, I can just dig down a little. No, that's that's a leak too. See, I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. Anyways, so that's that. Pretty look there. Um, and now this, that's just some random, a random clover patch. Oh, someone's here delivering something. Hold on. Okay, they're gone, but I don't know if you can see this. I don't even know if I can see it in the camera. Oh no, I can't. I don't know where I'm looking in the camera. But there's a hummingbird. Shoot, I can't see it. Anyways, there's a hummingbird sitting up in this tree and they've come back for the year. And I'll show you why in a second. But I think they have a nest in this tree again. I think they had one last year, but I never found it. Anyways, so this is this was like a little test patch to see about doing the clover over here um and then some uh what am i saying some blanket flower popped up there's a um porter weed that popped up like a ground cover so this is like a random little piece in the middle of the grass um but this is well that was like my voice cracked this is what is the newest out of everything so i said i was gonna compost everything and remulch everything and make it look tidier well that is what i've done so this whole bed looks unified now and i'm super happy with it i composted the whole thing and then planted it and then i used leaves from that oak tree out front and mulched it but i've added so many new plants so mostly native things um, and I moved this rose to here. It gets a little more sun on this edge of... I really hope that's not powdery mildew. I don't think it's water spots. On this edge, it gets a little more sun. So I put it in here. It gets really pretty pink flowers. Oh, I don't know if you could hear that. That's the hummingbird. Anyway, so let me stand back here in the shade. Um, so... I moved a couple things, like those are not native, that is a bird, 
how a bird's nest fern my kids got me that for Mother's Day a few years ago and I love it there in the shade but here is the Florida peperomia I think it's like a mini rubber plant is what they call it but that's a shade loving plant let me zoom out here and then so I recently I added another one and then I added this native columbine those flowers are so cute. Let me see. I can't see anything in this. Look at them. Aren't they cute? So another shade-loving perennial wildflower. This is Cooley's, oh my God, Cooley's water willow. Also native to Florida, but also endangered. And it's only in three, four different counties that they've uh, noticed populations growing. So I added five of those, kind of ringed around the outside here. Um, I added a oak leaf hydrangea. This is about the most sun that this gets to, during the day, um, right here. Otherwise, it's pretty dappled shade and then full shade later. Um, so the Cooley's water willow just rings around that side, and then the um, Columbine. I just love these flowers. They're so different. Like, and it's all hanging on that one, like, stem. So pretty. And so, there's a random alyssum growing here. I didn't put that there. And then if you look here, I had planted some yarrow. So I started the yarrow to kind of intermingle there, come over here, and then it swoops around there because that side gets a little more sun and yarrow can take more sun because um, that side is from here on throughout the rest of the day until the sun goes over my neighbor's house is full sun so these plants over here would not have thrived on this side of the bed but I was still trying to make it a more cohesive look so I um, that's why I looped like this around because that can take part sun and part shade those are more full shade um, so I added the yarrow and then there's a porter weed and then there's another porter weed over there kind of you know intermingle the two because um, having a full sun border in the same bed as a full shade border I haven't done that too much so we'll see how it ends up looking um, but yeah, so there's like lots of yarrow and that is the, I don't remember if I planted the red yarrow or the summer blend yarrow on this side, but either way, it's really pretty. Um, I haven't decided if I'm putting a fountain in that area, so there's no plants there yet, but there's a beauty berry bush. So I'm going to have the oak leaf hydrangea there and a beauty berry here. So those will both bulk up and be pretty and flowering. Um, eventually and then there's a coreopsis there and there and there <laughs> kind of a little bit of everywhere but then I added these three new ones so this will be a grouping I haven't planted them yet just yesterday um, the one in the middle is the lance leaf tick seed the coreopsis lancelotta and this is the leavenworth tick seed so that one is most closely related to this one. I really don't think that these are Florida native tick seed. There's so many tick seeds that are native to the Southeast. And I don't think that these are, but um, I know that that is the native, these are the native species. So these will be a really pretty addition here. Um, they flower throughout the year, pretty and yellow and ferny. Um, let's see, my, um, confederate jasmine or star jasmine is blooming now. Oh, I know that's not native, but it's just a southern staple to me. And it smells so good. Oh, I love it right here right now. I can't wait to just sit under there in a bench. I need to get a bench for under there just really pretty. I have lots of things going on over here. These are 
mustard greens that are going to flower. They give off that real cottagey garden look. Um, more leeks. These leeks are doing really well. More coreopsis, carrots, more yarrow to kind of blend in that other side. There's leeks all over here. There's some pollinators buzzing around. Um, there's some weeds in here. There's some uh, red mustard greens. There's also some over there. So even though they're small, I think they'll flower. So that'll be pretty. Some blanket flower. I try to... There's just too much blanket flower, so I really try to limit where it's growing because... Oh, look, there's a bee on that one because it will take over. Um, and then there's some more yarrow poking through. Yarrow here. These are the native uh, variety of yarrow. And then there's some, um, I don't know where they're non-native, but there's the cultivars of yarrow growing there. And then this is all freshly mulched. But this is, I'll pack up, the coral honeysuckle. And it is just in full glory right now. And it's the reason the hummingbirds are back. This is one of my favorite spots. My whole yard is just this plant right here. There's a butterfly, but these, you can suck the nectar out of these yourself and you'll realize why the hummingbirds love them so much. They're just sweet and there's a butterfly, where'd it go? And it's just so fun to watch and I can see this from the inside of my garden, um, <clears throat> from my window inside and that's how I get to see the hummingbirds all the time. Uh, oh, goodbye, hello. <laughs> anyway, so that about does it. I think this space is really coming together and like I said, I haven't touched the grass yet. Probably won't. I don't know if I'm going to redo the grass on this side or not. Um, we'll decide that at a later time. But if I do, I'm renting a sod cutter this time. And I'll do it in sections so I can actually walk out here. <laughs> um, but yeah. So thank you for watching the rest of my garden tour for March 2023. And stay tuned for little projects. And talk to you later. Bye.